KFC and the hotel union have an agreement after relations got so bad last month that KFC was closed for more than a week. General Secretary of the Bahamas Hotel Catering and Allied Workers Union, Darren Woods, has confirmed that the 300-plus employees of KFC signed a five-year contract with management of Restaurants Bahamas Limited, KFC's parent company, at the Ministry of Labor and the Clarence Payne Building yesterday. According to Woods, KFC employees lost no benefits. In this contract that is for a five-year period, the employees did not lose any benefit. They were able to maintain the rates of pay, the vacation that they presently enjoy. So those were the, those were the main contentious part of this, this, this last negotiation. But we were able to maintain all of the benefits. Now there were some benefits that were reduced. Um, one of them was the Christmas bonus. We, we've agreed that um, it would have been reduced going over the period, but by the time as the contract expires, it will be back to um, what, it is, um, what it was at the last um, contract. Last month, management revoked its voluntary acceptance of a contract with KMS KFC and Restaurants Bahamas Limited, then closed its nine New Providence locations for 10 days. Wood says going forward, the union will work on mending its strained relationship with KFC. We now have to um, work on the relationship going forward because what, is, what was done was never done before. But of course, um, because of the employees, we have to look past that because the union is here, management is here, the employees are there. So we are there to work on behalf of both um, parties to ensure that the company is viable at the end of the day, the employees are able to benefit, and thus, of course, the customers. And also, I would like to say to the customers of Restaurants Bahamas Limited, the employees asked me to also say to them that they appreciate their support during their time, and they look forward to their continued ser serving them going forward. Hundreds of government and immigration officials, police officers, students, lawyers, and members of the public packed the Paul Farquharson Center to receive some vital information on the protocols, effects, and penalties of trafficking of persons, not only in the region, but worldwide. It's one of the Ministry of National Security's plans to increase the awareness of the growing illicit trade and the consequences of participation. LaDon Davis tells us more. A report by the United Nations Global Initiative to Fight Human Trafficking reveals that 2.5 million people are trafficked around the world through forced labor or sexual exploitation each year. 1.2 million are children. Although human trafficking is a growing concern globally, it has not surfaced to any significant degree in the Bahamas. The Director of Public Prosecution says generally victims are afraid to come forward and so no one has been convicted of such a crime in this country. As it can happen within own countries it can country it can happen outside of the country and in the Bahamas our legislation speaks to that if you um, recruit someone from abroad for the purpose of exploiting the person here in Bahamas it's a crime if you recruit someone in the Bahamas for exploitation um, whether it is sexual or otherwise within the Bahamas that is also a crime from a worldwide perspective, human trafficking has been labeled as a crime against humanity. And Ms. Graham Allen says it has far-reaching effects. She gave this example. It um, breaches the human rights of persons. Persons are supposed to be free. But if you're going to hold them, if, you, if they cannot be allowed, if you employ someone, for example, from overseas, and you withhold their passport, you do not allow them to leave the, the home, they cannot go to the supermarket, they cannot, they, 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 the, the, their movements are restricted. Then that is a form of trafficking in persons. Meantime, for the Bahamas, illegal migration remains a growing problem as thousands of Haitians, Jamaicans, Chinese and other nationalities seek a better life. But if persons are found guilty of human trafficking in the Bahamas, they can face a fine, imprisonment or even a life term depending on the circumstances. LaDawn Davis, ZNS News. Well, this one's for all you soap opera junkies. Move over, Young and the Restless, a new Bahamian soap opera is about to hit the silver screen. Here's a preview of the salacious storylines you can expect. Here's Stephen Gay. 
For the first time this coming summer, ZNS will debut a television soap opera entitled Gippy's Kingdom, featuring an all Bahamian cast and crew. Recently, an agreement was signed between the BCB and the show's producer, Dr. Ian Strawn, establishing a partnership to make this production available to all Bahamians and residents at large. The show focuses on issues common to Bahamians through the eyes of the Gibson family. It focuses on issues of domestic violence, juvenile delinquency, the challenges of raising children. Um, it deals with so many of those issues, but it also deals with love, the power of love. So overall, there is a positive uh, message and po uh, positive emphasis, but they're real people making real decisions, making real mistakes. By the end of the day, I think that, they are, that, that the Bahamian people will be glued to their television screen. Meanwhile, BCB General Manager Edwin Lightborn feels that this venture truly reflects the corporation's mandate. BCB exists really to um, provide an avenue for creativity, for Bahamian creativity. That's why we exist, uh, to, to, to be that vehicle where creative minds can get an outlet. We have been seeking and we continue to seek and we will continue to seek to provide uh, local programs on television. We actually need more of them. So if anybody's out there listening to me uh, and you have um, um, programs or you're producing programs or if you have ideas for children's programs, uh, entertainment programs that are Bahamian based, we're interested in, in talking with you. The show's producers claim that they have some eight episodes ready for airing. Here's a snippet. They say it's better in the Bahamas. But did they ever see why? So how is your date? Do you understand or do you know how much a baby costs? I didn't want to buy this big property in, in, in the first beginnings. Filming of season two is due to start later this year. Dr. Strawn believes that his production can stand up against similar regional products. Um, we're doing our best to make sure that what you see there is of the highest standard that we can achieve. And we're working hard to also make sure that the performances are real and people can, re they resonate with people. All right? Now, the payment people will be the judge of the quality of the writing, the quality of the acting, the quality of the, of the score and the music and all the rest of it. But we're pretty satisfied that for a first time out, we did a pretty good job. Stephen Gay, ZNS News. A cooperative forum underway at the Wyndham Nassau Resort is promoting the importance of cooperatives. It's the latest event highlighting the International Year of Cooperatives 2012. Officially opened by the Ministry of Agriculture, the Minister of Agriculture, that is, Lawrence Cartwright, this morning, the forum speaks directly to the role of the cooperative society. Deputy Director at the Department of Cooperative Development, Judy Simmons, says cooperatives are being introduced as an answer to the agribusiness sector in in the country with a view to expanding the industry. Cooperatives represent economies of scale. If we group together and we team up, we can accomplish more. So that is basically what cooperatives are about. People helping people to help themselves. Hey Bahama, we're standing in that hotel right now. Bahama wants 100 handicraft bags like what you see on our display tables. One artisan could probably create 10 of them they wouldn't be able to meet that demand. So if 10 of them get together and put 10 of their products together, they can meet that demand. Well, Chairman of the Bahamas Agri-Business Cooperative Society Limited, Arrington Thompson, says he has no doubt people understand the cooperative concept, but it's still slow going. One of the problems is most of us are short on capital. Capital is what is needed to get the business engine rolling. If we come together, pool our resources, work together, but first we must trust each other, but in doing that we are able to work and begin to move our country forward as Bahamians. We have an opportunity to do that. Good evening everyone, I'm LaDawn Davis and here's what's making business news today. Business owners who suffered a loss due to the ongoing New Providence Road Improvement Project welcomed the government assistance proposal. Yesterday, teams from the Ministry of Finance began a survey to determine how best the government can provide economic assistance. Business owners were called on to be honest in completing the questionnaires. They have to provide information on their establishment's expenses and profits during the period 2007 to 2011.
In other business news, we're told that Sky Bahamas is trying to determine whether or not to reduce or continue Florida air service as the airline load factor was down by 15 to 20 percent. But fortunately, CEO Randy Butler said its inter-island market is doing extremely well and it's been subsidizing the U.S. market. Sky transports passengers between Fort Lauderdale and Abaco, Freeport and Nassau. A decision will be made on that route shortly. And in international business news, McDonald's CEO Jim Skinner, who is responsible for turning the fast food around, is retiring. During his tenure, the company's market capitalizing swung past $100 billion for the first time. McDonald's stock was less than $25 a share when Skinner assumed his post, and yesterday it closed at $96.72. We understand that the burger giant pulled in a profit each year that Skinner was chief executive. Skinner's successor is McDonald's president. President Don Thompson. Thompson becomes one of a small group of African American CEOs at the company. And that's all the good business news this Thursday. I'm the Don Davis. Good evening, everyone.